So hello everyone. Right, um, you know me, temporary problems. I can't seem to switch my camera. So I'm gonna either have no, I'm gonna have to go with the, with this camera. So I do apologize, guys. You're not actually gonna see me today. So welcome to the show. And I feel like has anybody ever seen that? Have you seen the film Groundhog Day, Horlicks? No, I don't think I have actually. Oh, basically what happens is is where Bill Bill Murray's in it and each day is is a repeat of he's repeating the same day over and over again. And and I feel a little bit like that because welcome to what might be the best issue to date. And I think that might be the fourth week running I've said that. Yeah. So um Gets right. Better and better. I also have rumors for people, which I'll go through after the build. Um, but the first thing I noticed about this this week is there is a massive amount of small parts. Um, in fact, for another project, I counted the parts. And this issue contains, we've been supplied with more parts than any other issue. Um, the, the closest we've had is um, issues two and issue four. Now, issue two had 53 parts and issue four had 45. And this is the best, biggest, in terms of number of parts, this has actually got 55 parts. And if you don't believe me, count them. Um, I, I just nearly fell off, uh, off my seat. Um, incidentally, this, this might shock you. In fact, I'll save it for later on. We're up to issue 26. Now, not counting 26. Does anybody want to have a guess at how many parts we've been supplied with um, to date? So before we start, in fact, what I'm going to do, um, I want to be really, really careful with these parts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut. This bag is, is sealed into separate sections. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut each section. I'm going to tip it into this tub, and then we'll check it. Is that right with you, Horlicks? Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. So, while I'm cutting them out, I'm just going to quickly go through the comments because the comments section is lit up straight away. So, hello, Horlicks, obviously. Um, hello, Dave Mill. Um, how are you? And hello, Dave, David Martin. And, oh, hello, Peninsula Paint. No, Peninsula, Peninsula Painting Projects. Really lovely guy. Um, absolutely lovely. He's got this. In fact, we, I'll tell you what, Peninsula... I know you don't do these part works, but do you think we might be to, uh, be able to get you on the show one week? That would be great. Let's let's look at things from a slightly different perspective. Um, sorry, and Dave Mills. So, do you know it's funny? I was thinking, Dave, did we see you last week? D honestly, don't worry. This isn't like um, you're not signing up to a contract where you have to see us every week and. And the World Cup only comes round every four years. I know England lose on a regular basis, but the World Cup's every four years. And, you know, we're here every week. So, honestly, don't don't worry about that. Um, so, love me. Hi, love minis. How I haven't seen you since this afternoon on Twitch. I uh, don't know what. I don't know how I got away with my Twitch session this afternoon. I didn't paint or make a single thing. I just talked for the whole hour. And um, I, I don't know how I got away with that. Right, so that bag is empty. Uh, hello, Dave Say as well. Yeah, I'm sorry, I missed, um, missed um, that. Sorry, Dave. Has joined us. Hello. Dave has actually sent me, Dave Say has sent me some, uh, uh, I haven't really had a good chance to have a look, um, but it's uh, on Facebook. Someone had redesigned the front radiator grill. And looking at it quickly, briefly, I think that with the help of um, that document and the 3D printer, I think I might be able to print that off and it'll be the first modification for the Root Master. Um, but I make no promises. So, Horlix, would we be able to check these parts off then? Yeah, let's do that. Uh, in fact, I'm going to use a two tub system, I think. Um, bear with me, guys. I need to find another tub. Right, that one's got stuff in it. Oh, we use one of my Lego tubs. 
So what I'm going to do is I've got everything tipped out into this tub. And then as we check it off, I'll tip it into this tub. So ready whenever you are, Horlicks. Okay, so 26A, we should have a cylinder head. Right, now there's and two cylinder heads. And 26B as well. Yeah, there we go. Two. Right. Sorry, guys, I'm just going to just check my camera, adjust it. Uh, I'm going to put the focal point about. Let me move the light. I am actually in the process of redesigning uh, my, my studio a little bit. So these at this particular stage look identical to me. Um, no, there's slight differences, but that's 26A and B. Yeah. Uh, 26C, EAC logo stickers. Right. There's one. Ah, there we go. And there's another. And they're quite neat. I like those. Oh, look. And they're tiny as well, mate. They are tiny. They are hating us right now, aren't they? They must uh, be because they're punishing us with all these parts. Yeah. Okay. 26D, uh, a fan. A fan. We need that in this weather, haven't we? Sorry, um, the uh, cylinder heads are, are metal. The um, the oh, that was lucky. They are, they are sort of foily, metally, and the fan is plastic. Okay, twenty six E and F are pulley parts. Okay. Uh, oh, there we go. That looks like 26E, and that is plastic. But again, like last week, they still look like quality parts. Yeah. Okay, and F. Again, plastic. Okay. Uh, 26G, fan mounting axle. Okay, that looks like it could be this. This is plastic. Hello, Chris Davies. Um, okay, 26H is a belt. That look, whoa, I'm really dropping things today. If only I had a pair of tweezers. Yeah. <laughs> and do you know what? I'm actually really interested to see how that belt wears because uh, uh, on my DeLorean, there's a belt on the engine and it's cracked already. It's all cracked and all horrible. Really? Yeah. And, it, you know, it doesn't move. So that'd be interesting. Uh, 26i yeah. uh, starter motor. Okay, I'm awesome. going to guess that's this one. This is a plastic part, but it looks well well done. Yep, 26j again, another the other half of the starter motor. Yep. Uh, 26k is the alternator. I think that might be this part. Again, when I say I think, it means it looks roughly the same in the magazine. But we, we won't know for sure until we actually fit it. Okay, 26L is the alternator cover. I That looks like this. Yep. And that's plastic. Apologies if you hear a motorbike in the outside. They do uh, run up and down. Uh, 26M, uh, alternator front. Now that looks a little bit like a jet engine. You know, when you oh, get yeah. model aircraft and you get the jet engines. Um, I'm a little bit confused because I found two of them. But the magazine doesn't suggest that there is a second one. And no. I'm looking, it just says alternator front. So I'm going to pop one to one side and I'm going to pop one in the box. A, you might have sent you a, a spare in error. Yeah, I might have done. Okay, uh, 26N and O are more pretty parts. Okay, these are smaller than the previous circly bits. As you see, I have very technical words that I use, circly bits. <laughs> okay. okay, 26P is an alternator cradle. Okay, and that's plastic. Okay, 26Q is the oil filler neck okay and that's plastic a couple of little punch marks from the uh from the uh mold but i 
it's only on one side, so I'm going to guess that that's carefully done. We could scrape the mould lines off, but um, we'll see how that goes. Again, until it's actually fitted, mm. uh, I'm not going to make a judgment on it. We may not see it, may so. Exactly, yeah. Okay, the oil uh, 26R oil filler cover. Okay, and that's the oil filler cover. cover. Like These look like the petrol caps and oil filler caps that I know. So there we go. Okay. 26S front housing. Uh, I'm assuming it's this part. This is metal. But it looks like there's more detail. This is the view they show in the magazine, but this is the view. This looks more interesting to me. So there you go. That's metal. Okay, 26T is a connector. Could that be it? Yeah, that looks about right. Yeah. Again, we won't know for sure until we actually fit it. Okay, 26U is a back plate. Okay, that definitely looks like the back plate. And that's plastic. Okay, 26V is a stub pipe. One stub pipe. Plastic. Dropped. It's a hole in both ends, so I assume that's how they're going to connect. Okay, uh, then there should be 11 DP screws, 1.7 by 4 mil. Um, bear with me one sec. I may have to make a grave confession. I cannot seem to find my screw pot, which I will confess I'm very ashamed if I've lost that. Um, I don't lose things, guys. They just get buried on my desk, <laughs> and then I put things on top. Oh, I found it. Yeah. It's right at the back of the shelf. In fact, I still got the screws from last week. So, um, so I'm just going to stick those. Sorry, guys. All right, DP, DP. I really should have sorted these last week, but... I didn't, and I'll probably regret it later on. Right, so we have DP screws. Yeah. They're quite small. Again, okay, yeah, 1.7 by 4 mil. There should be 11 of those. Uh, CM screws. Again, 1.7 by 4. And there's nine. Yep. Uh, FM screws, 2.3 by the 4. The FM. Yeah, uh, nine of those. And BP 1.5 by 3. They're very uh, small. Three of those. And again, okay. those, those of you, might, I'm sure everyone does know by now, but obviously P means it screws into plastic and M is for metal. Okie dokie. So I am going to get my brand new screwdriver set out on uh, Horlicks' recommendation. So um, I genuinely know, have no idea how good this screwdriver is or isn't. Um, and I'll be able to tell you at the end of the show. So, shall we begin? Yeah, yeah, let's do that. So, one, uh, you need to take the alternator, 26K, okay, and fit the okay, front, now. 26M, to the closed end. Right. So, this looks like 26L. And... 26k. Oh, that would be. Yep, that's this one. And the jet engine part. Yep, that's it. it. Looks like what we're doing is connecting, starting from the back of the diagram. And by that, I mean. We start from there because we've got the DP screw and then this cover will, will cover the screw. So obviously we need to put these two parts together. Um, yeah. Now, it doesn't seem to be any particular way that this goes on. It doesn't lock. It freely spins. And that will be fastened with a DP. DP screw, yeah. And I think that screw is what I was saying earlier about the J1 screwdriver okay, okay. bit. Only one way to find out then. So if I could have a drum roll off anyone. There we go. Yeah, that was terrible. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'll try your J1. 
Oh, and it definitely is magnetic. You know, I'd say that's bordering on too, too, um, too big. I'll be honest with you, I'm liking the J zero better. Okay. But you know, I might do a switcheroonie as we go. So. Oh God. Oh, are you right there, Horlicks? Yeah. Dead. All, all's good. Okay. Or as they say in Cool Runnings, you dead man. <laughs> okay, so no, no washing up liquid. But I think what's going to be easier is if I pop the screw through. No, no, there is no easy way to do this. Patience, I think, is the only easy way to do this. Oh, 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 I can tell already that I love this screwdriver. This is beautiful. Do you see what I mean? You've There's just this, something about yeah, it. That's what I was saying last week. This bit there, you jab that into your palm, and then it, it you kind of rest your finger there, and then that gives you... And it's just the right size for my hand. I don't have the largest hands in the world. They're not tiny hands, but it's just right for my hands. Maybe if you've got massive hands, it may not work for you. But then you could um, use the adapter in there to And make use it. a screwdriver of your choice. Right. So this part, I'm looking for... Ah, there we go. So... Just there on the top, if you can see it there, you've got a little notch. Oh, just there. Do you see it? And that notch will go into this little notch that's been cut out there. And push fit connector. That's a little bit, it, it stays, but it, it feels like it's, it, it's not, I mean, I'm pulling it and it's not coming out, but it just looks like it's going to fall out, but that's fine. I'm, I'm okay with that. So, um, cool. so it's still, it, the weather's cooled down a bit. It's still, um, it still need a drink weather. So yeah. hello, Rick the Rock Pate. How are you? Okay, so um, section two. Yeah, okay. So uh, take the two small pulley parts, 26 O and N, and check that you have okay, them the right be... way round. Right. So what I'm looking as a reference point, 26 N has this, this pointy out bit. You can see that it's got more protruding than, than O. Can you see that okay? So this one is going at the back and this one now it's not actually fitting together. I don't know if it's supposed to. Ah, but it's going over there lovely. So and that will be another DP screw. Yep. Now it's interesting this screwdriver it doesn't feel like it's got as much magnetic pull as the others but it has it's got more than enough to pick screws up so i'm trying to be critical as well as um praising look at that can you see that okay that's just really made short work of that because that's that's part of the screwdriver isn't it it's not just does the end fit but it's how much tension can you get on it yeah so that's not moving. I don't. I don't know at this stage if it's meant to. Um, it doesn't say make sure there's any movement or anything. So I'm just going to test. To be fair, actually, that's how many screws I've just picked up with the head. So it is actually as magnetic as as all the other screwdrivers. Mm. Right. So cool. section three. Yeah, three. Take the oil sump, twenty-five k. Okay. Oh, that's last week's part. 
So this is the section from last week, yeah, which we um, I did actually tape it down with a cork. Um, I mean, nothing's touched this, but if, for example, the room shaked or something and it fell off the shelf, I'd be confident that would have survived. So I'm also going to remove... I can't remember which section we removed now. That one. Right. Do you know, it's been so long, I can't remember what the part is which now. Does that go in there? Oh, you bugger. I've actually broken it. Oh, right, okay, not a problem. Um, sorry, guys, we're going to have an unscheduled gluing. I'm re doing really bad on these last two parts, aren't I? I'm just trying to make sense of the picture, though, because that doesn't make... If you look at image three... We're working on the one with the cog attached, but then with the sorry, the red part attached. Yes, but it doesn't. It's not on the same orientation, is it? That was lucky. I just stuck the wrong side on. So, guys, lesson learnt here. Check. Check things and be careful because I haven't been, and you can see what's just happened. But thankfully, this gorilla glue is pretty awesome. I might actually have to glue that on later. So I do apologize, guys. I'm I'm trying to make myself look competent, and I'm failing, failing miserably, aren't I? No. Uh, the thing is, they're right. so fragile, these parts. Yeah, I know. Right, so let's have a look. So what we're doing is we're working from this side. Ah, there you go, yeah. Because the uh, the red section is at the front. And, and obviously, officially, this part hasn't actually been attached yet. So, okay. So then we need 26P. Uh, 25A. 25A, which is this piece that we um, did last week. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. And then fit the alternator cradle 26P to the base of it all. So, I'm fixed in place with two CM screws. Do you know what? This reminds me of the Lego videos that I did. And it's just so hard to find the parts. There we go. That is a nice fit. I don't need to describe that because there's only one way. Yeah, you, you can't fit this the wrong way. And obviously, look at the picture. You can see that the cradle cradles it from underneath. So, and that will go in with two CM screws. So, yes. Oh. want to do a comparison between these yeah they actually look the same apart from maybe the uh, the thread so now I gotta confess here I have stolen an idea from somebody although I've stolen it with permission my washing up liquid is now in a little dropper bottle <laughs> and that's gonna whoops do you know I I think I should give up tonight because um, I've just I'm dropping everything so I'm just going to pop a tiny drop in that hole and a tiny drop in that hole. Sorry, you can't see that, guys. There you go. And you can see already how much waste I'm saving. So CM screw. Oh, I, I'm not feeling it today, am I, Horlicks? No, it's, it, do you know what? These parts are so fiddly. I can just I can just see how fiddly they, it's going to be trying to you need you need like three or four hands, didn't you? Yeah. There you go. I'm just going to pop that in until it grabs. I think I am having a bad clumsy day. Red piece is the rear of the engine. Dave Miller's just said. Right. right. And 
I pop that one in till it grabs. So they're both in, and then I'm going to tighten them both. Okay, just a couple of turns each side. Um, I don't know if this makes a difference. This is just the way that my granddad taught me to do screws many, yeah. many years ago. And it's just, it keeps the parts level so that one part isn't going to push on another one. And I'll tell you what, I think the combination of this screwdriver and the washing up liquid is amazing because there's, there's very little effort required on this. So, I mean, I've already decided that last week the washing up liquid was better, having tried it a few weeks. Right, that is... Oh, actually, I could get a little bit more on that. There's a little tiny bit of give. So I'm just going to go for about a quarter of a turn. There you go. There's no give at all on that now. None whatsoever. Okay. Yeah, no, that's good. Uh, okay, so that was uh, step three. Step four, position the alternator 26K in the cradle yep. 26P. So that's the part we've just fished on the previous step. Yeah. And then line it up so the screw sockets are aligned. Okay. So we've got the, the red part to the rear and then the actual uh, alternator. We have... Um, the screw at the front, um, how do I describe this? The jet engine -y bit at the front with the two little the parts on the front and it's fully. And that's going to go in. And that's going to be quite difficult to find. You've just got to keep turning it and twisting it until the, the holes match up. So there we go. There's my holes. There. Okay, so and then that, you fix yeah. that in with two DP screws. Okay, so these are plastic, so no washing up liquid required. I suppose another way we could do this, if we just pop the screw in, into the cradle, obviously not like that, because it obviously doesn't work. So yeah, I don't know if I said it just now, but Chris Campling said he has bad days every day. Right, so then I'm going to line this hole. I'm sorry, I can't bring this to the camera. I'm going to have to bring it. Uh, down to the floor but I still can't do it even doing it that way look I think I'm going blind now these days uh, Penny uh, uh, can I what can I just check the orientation of that is the pulley yeah. facing the back yeah, I've got it the wrong way good spot there Horlicks you focus so much on the screw you kind of forget everything else around it right so I, I'm just going to put this in just till it grabs and I can bring it up to show you um, it is, it's, you've got no space to look in. Right. So there we go. So I've just put this one screw in and it's just enough to hold it. And then we've got the jet engine -y bit at the front and the pulleys. And then the, uh, what are we calling that bit? The sticky really out bit at the back the on the, yeah. on the outside pointing back. Okay. And then now that we've got this in, I just need to support it. And I'll take a DP screw, the second of the two. And that should be lined up for me already. There we go. And now that's going in like butter. So thank you so much for recommending this screwdriver to me, Horlicks. I mean, look, I'm only up to section four, and I know that this is the screwdriver. So I got this from Amazon. I'm not endorsed by this company, but... It's just weird, isn't it? That's what I said. I mean, I've only used it a couple of times, but you just know. You do know. I mean, can I make a confession? When you said you just know, I'm like, what the hell is he on about? But now that I've used it, I totally get what you mean by that. Mm. Okay, so section five yes so take the two parts of the starter motor 26 i and j okay check the and fit is, oh look that's nice you've got two protruding bits here and then you've got two circular bits and that will go in inside them so when it's in there you go it's locked in did you hear it lock in if you don't quite get it you see it doesn't fit but then as you turn, the, as you twist them, 
There you go. That's locked in. Sorry, carry on, Holix. Right, yeah, no, that's it. Um, and then fix them together with two DP screws. I tell you what, this this is very good. I said it doesn't feel magnetic, but I just dropped the screw, and the magnetic pull was so so much. He just kind of went, "No, nope, you're not going anywhere." Right, so that one's in till it grabs. And the second one. Yeah, because I must must admit this this is quite a lengthy screwdriver, but it's um it's quite a lot of control on it. And uh, probably my favourite bit that I'll never use. If you need to make it longer, you just I've make it longer. It. I've used it a few times actually, but on my three D printer when I'm servicing it, it's brilliant. For yeah, that. those hard to reach places. Right, there we go. I think that's part five done. Thank you, Dave. So, uh, step six. Identify the two holes for the starter motor circled on part 25A. Okay. So, we've got the red part at the front now, and we've got two holes just behind it, and that's where they are. Now, yeah. the starter motor, it wants to go flat circle at the front, and the pointy up bit backwards and in fact they're not two screw holes you've got one screw hole in a locating peg so that will go in like so and then we will fasten that with CM screw. Uh, CM screw so let's just pop a little so figure out the top one is the locating pin the bottom one is the actual screw hole so I'll just put a tiny drop of of whoop, no, well, sorry, into there. And I mean, I know washing up liquid isn't expensive, but that's going to save me a lot of wastage, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's 60p a, a litre. That's, um, but you know, you, if when I was pouring out how much I'm estimating I'll need, um, I was probably wasting at least a third of it. So, is anybody guessing how many parts we've had so far in the first 25 issues? Did I ask that? I meant to. Yeah, you did ask. Yeah, actually, yeah, you did ask. Um, you asked me as well, and I made a guess off oh, air. You, you made a terrible guess, didn't you? Yeah, you said I was... Uh... We, we have a chat before we... Um, Uh, yeah, Chris Chris Davies. Yes, I've sent parts. Um, yeah, we had a, we had a little chat beforehand. And I said, guess how many parts we've had so far, and I can't remember what you said, but it was it was genuinely not even close. <laughs> um, right, so that's part six. Nothing to be embarrassed about. I mean, we do the parts every week. Um, now, one of one of the part one of the issues we got. Two of the issues, we only received three parts. So um, I can see why people might not guess a massive amount. Okay, so section seven. Yes, okay, so seven. Uh, take the fan mounting axle, 26G, and the two pulley parts, 26F and okay, E. I'm just going to slow you down a little bit. Right, so that's 26G. And... 26 f now we've got two pulley parts they they're a circle with the smallest circle on top the first one we want is the one with the larger circle by the looks of it and that's going to slip over there and then the next one that's going to make a pulley obviously yeah and and then take the fan yeah That looks like there's a right way and a wrong way. We want these, by the looks of it, these fan blades have got a little bit of a curve to them. So they want to be curved away from the bit that I just dropped. Away from, from I'm going to call this the back for now. And this will be the front here. 
Oh. So, you see the slight curve to them. They're going to curve that way right. from, from there. Okay. Yep, and then fix that all in place with the DP screw. Okay, I might struggle again here. Um, it's just holding the parts in place. You you really do ideally need a third hand. At times, you probably need a fourth one. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to see if I can balance. No, see, I'm not even going to balance the screw in there. Right, so it's just a case you're going to have to just get a purchase on it however you can. There you go, I've done that. Now, I seem to remember last week when we did this one we needed to leave it so that there was a uh, you were able to rotate it oh there you go Look, it does actually say in the magazine fit the fan 26d over the pulley with the concave sides of the fins indicated by the red lines facing the pulley now <laughs> if you don't and i'm not calling anyone thick here um if you don't understand the difference between concave and convex, um, the way I always remember it is that caves, they go in. So you go into a cave and therefore convex must come out because it's the opposite. Is, have I got that the right way around? Concave yeah. goes in. So if you're seeking shelter, you go into the cave. So there you see... It's from this side, it's concave. And that's how I always remember it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to tighten it up so that this can still move. Don't think that's going to work. Right, okay. Listen, I'm going to tighten it. And then we'll find out later on if it needs to move. So like last week, I actually over tightened it mm. and uh, I, I just loosened it off once I found out that it needed to be looser. OK, okay so we so, happy with that. Yeah, that looks good. That's all good. Uh, and then step eight, you need to fit the belt over the pulley formed by parts 26 E and F. OK, now. I'm going to assume that there's a right and a wrong way to this. No, it looks shiny on both sides. So I'm just going to pop over. And I would just, there we go, that fits in there nicely. And I would just say, if it fits, it must be correct. Yeah. That's, that's a really nice fit in there. That's nice and flush. So these two parts are obviously made for each other. Okay, okay. and then position the screw eyelet on the end of the part 26G. Which is over the one the, section? Sorry, go on. No, yeah, uh, over the um, the screw socket on part twenty-five A, as indicated by the dotted line. I see. Right. So what I'm going to do is this is a little bit fiddly, guys. You may possibly need a set of tweezers. I'm going to pop my finger there. I can't find my finger now. Look. Right. You see there. I've got my finger on there just to stop it from coming out. And then there's the pulley. And I'm just going to pop the pulley into there. And then I'm going to bring that across to there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. Now we need to hold that. It wouldn't be wise to get the screw ready first. But I could have perhaps just put washing up liquid in beforehand. Because now I've got to try and do that now. Mind you, it does say, I mean, I don't suppose it matters what order you do this in. Oh. It then says after you screw that in, then stretch the belt. Yeah. Uh, I think it's going to be easier this way. Yeah, I agree, because um, then you haven't got to get in there with tweezers. Yeah. But I've got a really big tip for you. Um, once you've got your finger holding that, it's then too late to discover you haven't opened the bag of screws yet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> FM screws. So...
Oh, this must be one of the worst constructed issues I've done out of, out of all of them. Right. Oh my god. That 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 was less than no effort. Oh, Horlicks. Bit of an extension going on there. Well, what I what I noticed was that where this gets a bit bigger, yeah, it's starting to push them a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So. But look, when you've got the extension on, you're obviously, by the nature of physics, you're going to have less purchase. And yet, that's fine. They're, look at that. That is brilliant. Oh, thank you so much for that recommendation. So it doesn't look like this fan actually does anything, but it certainly looks the part. That looks fantastic, doesn't it? Yeah. That does I'm really, really happy with that. Really happy with that. Okay. Oh. Well, I've got to be honest with you. If the issue stopped there, I would say satisfying issue. <laughs> um, but we There's have no we're actually less. Well, in terms of number of sections, we're actually less than halfway through. Brilliant. Okay, so let's move on. Step 10. Step 10. Do you, you mean to... step nine uh, or step nine yeah, yeah. Um, i will say actually last week um Horlix almost missed the first section because it was on the bottom of the first page and then i saw a youtuber miss it almost and then i don't read this magazine beforehand but i do buy the name because i scan it and i need to send it to Horlix. i do i do look and I, this afternoon when I did it, I looked at this and I went, oh, what's, what's going on there? It starts with section three. Um, so the way it's laid out, if you are a little bit, but you see there we've gone seven, eight, and then nine is beside eight. So these, these steps are easy to miss. So be, make sure you count the numbers. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so step nine. Fit the screw socket tab on the oil filler cover 26R between the eyelets on the oil filler neck 26Q. Check that you have the correct orientation and fixed in place with two BP screws. And then it does say do not over tighten. So why can I not find that part? Oh, okay, yeah. So it doesn't quite look the same in the magazine. It looks a bit, it, it, it'll look obvious now because I've found it, but that's it. I was looking for for more of a shaped piece like this. Um, so this is going to go, right, on one side you've got one one tab and on the on the other side you've got two tabs. You need the side with two. Because this is going, this is the, what do we say, this is the oil filler cap. Yes. So that's going to be able to go up and down like that. Yeah, and I guess so that's, that's, that's why it's, nice it's, do not over tighten. So I'm assuming, yes. even though it doesn't say, that's going to be a moving part. Uh, I, I would imagine so, whether it's intended to or not, it's now going to be a moving part. Right. But also... You're screwing two screws in to meet. So if you over tighten them, you're just going to kind of push them against each other. Mm. So I will do the trick of, right, I think this will be the only time we use BP screws because there's three screws in there and we need two of them for this part. And now I know why they give us a spare because one's just leapt out. There it is. I thought I'd lost one. So I'm going to seal that bag up again. So what I shall do, I shall take one. That's going to be far too big. This might be your, no, this is going to be a J triple O, I think. Oh, yes. And don't forget to put the J zero back in the hole so you know which it is later. Oh, okay, mum. <laughs> 
we know because you get used to what ones are what and then if they're not yeah. in the right holes yeah you'll go oh that's not right right so we're going to pop one screw in no i've just done oh, no, that's not i thought it was a tiny crack in it oh wow oh oh no yeah. Okay, yes. that's struggling to go in there. So what I'm going to do, look, I've just popped a little bit of the screw in and I'm going to take it out. I'm just creating like a guide hole. There we go. So I'm just going to hold this up to the light so that I can see through it. That's absolutely perfectly lined up. And that should there we go so that's in there just enough to grab um it might be a problem part with mine um or it might just be the way it is but it was a little bit of a struggle so i just sort of because obviously these are self-tapping screws so they're going to cut the thread as they go in and then you might just need to put your thumb over the top there as you see that when i screw it's trying to pull that cap up so because it's it's a it's plastic anyway but b it's, it is actually warning us not to over tighten and i'm just gonna go i mean this is a good screwdriver but i'm just gonna turn until it's like i'm applying this much pressure it doesn't want to go anymore so i'm not going to force it and i can see why we don't over tighten because it's going to squish those two bits of plastic in and if you over tighten it it's just gonna it's gonna squish them and probably the whole thing will pop out okay so that's that okay so now we are on step 10. okay uh, take the f uh, the left crankcase assembly from the previous issue that's the one yeah. and then identify the fixing point for the oil filler neck on the injection pump okay and i've just noticed a little bit of um flash there um but i can clearly see that that's not meant to be there so i'm just going to cut that away now there's two ways to put this in there's this way that's not quite a good fit that's a terrible fit actually right it is there is actually only one way you can see in the magazine do you remember i said that the top of this has got two two sections which you now can't see because we put the cap on the other section has just got the one but it's actually off to one side and when you pop that into this and be careful because you've got this bit i've already broken mine don't break yours um so this needs to go so that the cap is facing forwards but that will bring the tab to the top and that's going to take some manipulation. Mine's not fitting perfectly. I think, I don't know if you can see that, it's a little bit off. Not much, but I think that will just pull that into place any more and I'd risk snapping it. So I don't know if you can see it, just where my thumbnail is. Yeah. It's not quite a perfect match. And that's a, P, uh, a DP a screw. DP screw, yeah which is of course because that part is plastic so dps this will sit upright quite easily so trouble is it's like i know how i would do it if i was doing this you know in the comfort of my own room but obviously I'm trying to do it so that it's it's on camera and it makes it a little bit trickier. Oh look. Doesn't help when the screw falls out. Oh. Let's 
sorry, guys. So this is a moment where you need another hand. Yeah. I'm looking for objects. Again, I'm trying to keep it in camera view. It could just be the angle I'm doing it at. Um, doesn't help the fact that I'm going to have to do it leaning on the ground because the uh, surface, in effect, acts as a as a, an extra hand, and that the part just doesn't quite seem to want to go in. Come on. I wonder if it actually does fit. Once you get that bite, it's easy. In fact, actually, yeah, it's not even locking in. You can see that what I've done is I've scraped it because it's not going in right. So make sure you've got... Okay, I didn't see where that went. I think I have lost a screw. Okay. Doesn't matter because you get you get an extra screw with every issue. Mm. And I've got I've been keeping all of my screws, so I've probably got about ten spare at least. All right. There is a trick I can show you, but it involves blue tack. Right. That does not want to go. Oh, hang on. We've got some biting. Yeah, that's bitten. Okay, so this is extremely difficult, but I think it's it's not quite lined up, and I think what it's done is it's kind of cut its own hole in. Right, I'm use a slightly bigger screwdriver head just to get a bit more purchase on it. I mean, it might be. I've got the oh, oh, was that the screw I just lost? Trying to figure out where we are. It is now anyway. Right. Be careful where you put your fingers. I might actually strip the thread. Right. I might have to go back to J.O., you know. It means you might have been right, Horlix. Ah, there we go. So, my apologies, Horlix. You were correct. Are your seagulls on the go there? Are they hungry? Yeah, it's about the time now. Okay, that's going, but that doesn't want to be over tightened. I can see that snapping very easily. So I'm tightening very slowly. Now that's that's fine. I'm happy with that. Yeah. So it's not in by much, and I think that my particular issue is slightly out. Um, if you did not have the black pipe on, it would be it would be because I'm um, obviously this is where it snapped just there, and I've put gorilla glue on, and it does feel very tight. But obviously, if I accidentally put my finger there, I'm sure it'll either snap in the same place or snap. Well, it'll snap somewhere. There we go. Right. I'm not going to push that any further because. You can see I've just started to begin to accidentally strip the uh, the cross bit there, so that's that's not going anywhere ever. So that's a bit of a cock up on my part, but we've we've got the job done. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So with that part done, fit the end of the stock pipe twenty six V into the socket on the right ca uh, crankcase. Okay. So that will be on this part. And all right, so it goes on the hole on the hole there. Yeah. Um you know, I think I have actually dropped every single part. Right, there's no there's nowhere to lock this. So you, if you put it in at the wrong angle, 
that you can put it in. Um, I'm going to assume at this point that it's going to go straight up. So try to get it straight up as you can. Um, but obviously, you could um, you could just loosen it off a bit and readjust it at a later stage. Um, obviously, we don't know when this when the positioning of that becomes really important. Right. So DP screw. DP, yeah. And I'm going to come in from the other side. And however I do this, it's it's really fiddly. I can see a lot of people have trouble with this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to put it on the table. I'm so sorry. Um, but I'll just put it on the table and I'll just do it until it bites. There we go. Right. So that's now bitten. So obviously once it's bitten, I can now support that with my thumb. And now I can no, perhaps support it with two fingers to keep it in the position that I want it. And then gently screw this because we are dealing with a metal screw in a plastic part. And you can see that pipe is wibble, wobble, wibble, wibbling, wobbling. So it's almost tight. So it's tight enough to hold it. So I'll just move that into the position that I want. And I'm happy with that position. So I'll just pop the finger in there and I'll give it. It'll probably take about half a turn. There you go. It's only taken a quarter of a turn. And now that's solid. If I find that's in the wrong position... I'll just ease that back off a quarter of a turn and that'll still be that'll still hold, but it'll be loose enough to move. Okay. Yeah, but it's good. So I'm playing with the parts already. Look. <laughs> in, in my mind I'm going <laughs> ding ding. Next stop, Lynn. I'm thinking of all my passengers with their silly questions. Like today I had someone and he said, Are you going now? And I said, No, I'm standing there talking to you. <laughs> so okay. right so uh, take, 12 12 yeah uh take the back plate 26u and the front housing 26s okay. and fit them together and fix in place with cm screws okay so 20 sorry I, you probably saw me spinning that around um what i'm looking at doing is is lining up the orientation and we've got screw holes at the bottom but this cut out bit there needs to be on the other side so that looks all proper and correct and then this part is the next you can pretty much see what's going to happen that's going to go over there and that is just literally a cover that's because You've got this piece, this is a metal piece and this is a plastic piece. So you can quite literally see we're just, excuse me, we're just filling that gap in. I've got a couple of poor quality parts here. There's a little bit of, um, you can see where these have been cut off a sprue and I've just got a little bit of excess there. So I'm not recommending this because this is uh, a sharp object, but I'm just going to trim that ever so slightly. Always bet if you do trim, Obviously, if you're a young person, get adult help. But if you are going to trim, trim too little rather than too much because you can always take more off. So there we go. I'm happy with that fit. Um, and I'm going to use two CM screws, yep. which is right. screwing them into metal. So... Do you know, I genuinely think with all these small hints and tips, I'm twice the builder I am before I started this. So thank you to everybody. But this is this is what I call a great audience. They're not they're not scared to jump in and say, Well, try doing this penny. And it's all little tips like that that help. Share the hobby love. Right, I'm not 100% sure about that screw, so it might come out again, but uh, so that one's in just enough to bite, so I'm just going to loosen it. It just felt a bit funny as it went in. Obviously, you want to keep these screws, like, these screws will wobble 
or mine have anyway. There we go. I'm happy with that. So they're in. So I'll just tighten them up a little bit on each at a time. And the top looks like it's trying to push out again. Okay, I don't know if it's going to matter, but it is trying to push out at the top because all the pressure is being applied at the bottom. It's it's pushing out at the top, but we'll we'll see if it makes a difference. Okay. So okay. yeah, that's that. Uh, that's step twelve. So thirteen. Align the two eyelets on the front housing twenty six S. Um, so that's above the fan uh, with the screw sockets on the crankcase. So that's going on to check. I've got this right. I don't want to give you advice that's incorrect. Right, okay, those screws are obviously not in quite enough. Right. So just put, just going back a step to issue 12, have a little look. Can you see there that, that front screw is just a little tiny bit poking out? That's poking out too much. So make sure you do get these screws in flush. So if you can see there, the screws, there you go. The screws are below the level of, of the part. Now, the reason for that is that you need to get this part in between there. And it's a very tight fit. If you've then got screw, uh, screws, it's not gonna, there's not going to be enough gap. You see that it goes in nicely then. And what I like about this is there's a little cut out at the bottom and you see where we've screwed the fan in that screw from the fan is going to go into there so it's just creating the room uh, so there we go that's just sort of clicked into place these parts are just ever so slightly ill-fitting you see there they're just ever so slightly off not much so um now, this looks like a happy little house to me. You see, you've got the roof. And obviously, if I'd put that in upside down, it would be upside down. It looks more like a frown there, doesn't it? So with the fan, you've got the happy little house on the top. And then you know you've got it the right way around. In fact, let's do our usual trick. We'll try and pop that in. There we go. If we put it in upside down, we can see there we've got a massive gap. You see that gap there? And you don't actually see the happy little face. Okay. So make sure the hole is at the bottom. Try not to drop your pieces. Try not to drop your pieces 400 times like I'm doing. Today's, today is a lesson on how not to do things. That is a tight fit, and you will need to push fairly hard, but make sure you're pushing on that part, not anything else. Yeah. So that's CM screws we'll fasten that yeah. with. I'm going to have the freshest smelling bus in the whole world. <laughs> Still, at least I know I'm recovering from my cold because I can smell the washing up liquid. Okay, so I'm just going to screw that in just until it bites. It's actually pushing, pushing this part out. This isn't the best fit I've ever dealt with. So this is quite hard work. How long have we been doing this for so far, Horlicks? Um, we have been... About an hour. Yeah, say that. Yeah, about, yeah, about an hour. Right. Okay, that's grabbed, but that's that's going in at a funny angle. This is... 
I don't like it. I don't like the way it's clicking when I turn. And oh, there we go. That's better. Right, so I am really struggling with this piece. I don't mind admitting. Um, that's metal, isn't it? So we'll see how this screw goes in. Um, I would imagine that once we've got those screws in properly, it will pull the part down. But the screws are being pulled out because of the because of this part. Okay, they're going in. They're going in. It, it's tough work, but. You know, if it wasn't, if it was easy, it wouldn't be fun, would it? There we go. That's pulled them into shape. And again, be careful because my fingers are so, my hands are so close to that, that fan. But I'm actually now happy with that. That is not going anywhere. Okay, so there's the happy little house on the top, blowing the lovely cool air towards us. Come on. <laughs> okay. So are we ready for part 14? Yes, and it does actually. Sorry. Do you know what? I've missed a little tip. It says you may find it helpful to first loosen the FM screws fitted in step 10 of issue 25, circled in red. Then one, once part 26S has ah. been fitted securely in place, retighten the screws. But it, it's only an option. Uh, so what it's saying is to loosen these screws here, which could actually remove this part altogether so you can take it off fix this and then reattach with those screws the only thing that i would be a bit iffy about is because the fms have they cut a thread in yeah would they be a little bit looser yeah um but we got there in the end so remember if you're struggling there and i did struggle um that just yeah loosen these and i missed that as well and it's it's funny, actually, because it's one of those sections that you shouldn't miss. Look, great big red circle. How yeah. do you miss that? And we, we both just did. So, um, yeah, that might make life a little bit easier. But I do like, I mean, look, you can see that screw in there where they got a little cutout for it. Yeah. Um, so that's a good little touch. Okay. Okay. So, uh, as of the uh, 14, take the left and right crankcase assemblies, 25C and 25B, and fit them together as shown, fixed in place with two FM screws. Okay, now if you hold it, look look at it from above. What we're looking at is we have uh, a smaller tube there and there, and a larger one there. So we know that that's in the right position. And then just look at it from another angle and we can tell that the height is really correct. And just push those in gently. You've got to push on this one because you're bringing this one in to meet that one. So keeping it straight. There we go. Once it's straight, it seems to have gone in absolutely fine. Okay. So. And there's another little uh, tip circle it says do not over tighten the screws for the cylinder heads until you've fitted the part 26t in the next step okay well that does refer to the next section right fm screw so i'm going to pop the, the washing up liquid onto the screw because i think it's going to be a bit fiddly to get into there I don't. Does it make a difference which way round we do it, whether we apply in the hole or on the screw? I don't think it does, does it? No, I shouldn't imagine. 
Okay, so the first one I'm just going to pop in just enough just to grab. And that's gone in very easily. Um, do you know, Ian Mitchell has just said a, a comment about um, my green map perhaps should be white. And uh, I'd be inclined to agree with him. But in actual fact, when I was chatting the other day to people on, on, on my Twitch channel, um, sorry, what I'm doing is I'm just going into each one. And I'm just alternatively tightening about half a screw. It doesn't need a lot. Backwards and forwards. Um, yeah, now obviously one of the other things that I do is painting. And that's why my de my, my mat is so filthy. Um, but we were actually talking about getting another mat. Um, we'll keep the filthy one for painting. I, I like using a filthy mat for painting because it's... It just kind of shows what I've been doing. But for part work, I, I would like a clean mat. So I was actually thinking of getting another one and use the nice clean one for part works and the dirty one for, for painting. So Ian has pretty much echoed what we were talking about completely independently just a few days ago. Right, so I'm really happy with that. That is in there nice and tight. That's not coming apart. And do you know what? That looks really meaty. I could stop there and be happy. Mm. Well, I could have stopped a while back. Okay. Location so, step 15. Yep. Take the cylinder head 26A and fit it over the raised screw socket and peg at the top of the crankcase. Okay. So I'm trying to find an obvious way. Right, these are different. Right, okay. So they actually go this way round. So you want you see you've got some some pluses. I'm gonna call them plus signs for the sake of descriptions. And they want to go as you're in the diagram. Right, you've got the red part is is like that. And then as you look at them, you want the pluses on, on your right-hand side. And then as you turn them over, you'll see two or one holes. Now, I've actually got these around the wrong way because the one with two holes wants to go on the right and the one with one hole wants to go on the left. I'll show you that by by picture. So there's the red part, there's the two cylinder heads, there's the two plus signs, and you see that this one's got two holes, and this one's got just the one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that will go, that's interesting because we've got, I want to double check this. Ah, okay, I see now. Right. You see, we've got four, four places to connect, but we've only got one screw hole on the top. What you've actually got is inside there, you've got a locating lug. So that will guide you. Um, let me just make sure I've got the right one. So can you see how one is going to line up with the locating peg and one is going to line up with a screw hole? Right. Okay. And in theory... Could you put them on the wrong way then? As is, the, is are they different distances? I'd you... like to think that they made a fail safe, but let's give it a try. So um, that's not a comfortable fit, but it's going on. I would say if you got these around, wrong round the wrong way, you would notice. Yeah, in fact, this, this don't want to go on. So, but one word we've not used a lot, which will be quite appropriate here, is dry fit or test fit or bring together various words that get used here. So there we go. Ah, oh, lovely luck. I put both pieces on before I've before I've started to screw. 
and they are quite comfortable together okay okay yeah and then attach yeah. them with fm screws okay okay so and actually yeah, it does say afterwards it says no the cylinder heads are not the same in particular there's a different arrangement of screw holes around the rim yeah uh, make sure you fit them in the right way i've probably used way too much washing up liquid on that one but hey what's the worst that could happen yeah, uh, Ian's joined the club with the screwdrivers. You won't be disappointed, I don't think. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, obviously there is an element of um, personal taste, but I'm really enjoying them. Um, I actually, I went a little bit flashy and I bought a, a slightly upgraded version. But to be honest with you, I think I might have wasted my money um, because for all the extra money that I paid... The only thing that's probably useful is is a wristband that you then attach the other end to something and it's like to do with static. Um, all the other parts I've either got or I'll never need. So the actual screw... Oh! 2016. Do you know what? I've, I've, I've totally ignored the warning. Oh. It said not to move a Titan. Yes. So what I'm suggesting here then is just tighten it until it grabs. Well, that's all right because I was a step, I was one step ahead of that. Yeah, no, that's fine. I sh I should have seen should have seen this as well. So that's my fault there. I didn't read the instructions properly. So I fitted these. I don't know in the context of this part. Um, I don't know what they mean by over tight. And so you can see there, I've got it very, very loose. Um, so that's fine. And we're nearly finished, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. So part 26. Okay, so then it says fit the two pegs on the connector 26T into the corresponding sockets on the inner corners of parts 26B and A. Right, so... We've got the red part to my right, and now I think that this is different on each side. I think that little round, round bit is a bit smaller, but I can't figure out which way round it goes. Um... Aha, right. Okay, that's the correct way. And the reason I think that is if you look just along there, there seems to be a little bit going across. Can you see that? Now, yes. on this side, you've got bits going across. It's quite hard to see. But then on the other side, there's nothing. So in, in my particular case, it looks like scruffy side up. Yeah, I've just zoomed right in. And on the top, you've got like a yep. cutout. There we go. And that goes in quite nicely. Um, I'm going to assume you can put that in, in, in the wrong way around. But that's quite a good uh, fit. Yeah, so, that's a good um, fit. And then obviously so I, once I don't that's want to in, pull that out. yeah, once that's in, we can then tighten those screws from okay. previous issue. I can, uh, I can see why. I think I would have got away with it if I'd have tightened these up, but I can see why they why they said it because if these are slightly out, it's not going to fit, and then people are going to end up jamming them in, and it's going to break the pegs on that. And this. Is a right now if you if you do this like I've done it and do it really loose, do not screw one down and then the other because what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull it down and it's gonna bend this. This is I just noticed that this bit is, is going up and down as I as I tighten this. So try to keep these as level as you can. So maybe half a turn, half a turn. Yeah. 
because if you pull this one down and this one's quite far up can you see it look as i move it that middle mm -hmm. bit so if you have one quite far up it's actually going to stretch it and it'll break that you've probably got to do quite a big difference to break it but let's not push it right that's not going anywhere lovely okay uh, so the last bit yeah is step 17 peel the backing paper off the first aec logo right uh, sticker so stick it in the recess in the cylinder head so okay. the screw head is covered so it looks like the red part is on our right and it looks like if we if we look at it from this angle we're going to read the aeg that way um does anyone know if it makes a difference if if we put the aeg on the other way around um but the magazine would suggest that there's the red part on the right and then there's the AEG, which looks like it's red, which is interesting because isn't the isn't the uh, the engine accessed from this side? If no, hang on, that's the front, isn't it? Yeah. Ah, so it will be red. So that makes sense. So when you open the bonnet, that's no, what you... yeah. yes, yeah. As you look in, you're going to go. Oh, right, it's an AEC. Yeah yeah okay dokie so this is going to be quite a tr tricky part so i would suggest being very very careful and using a knife or better still the tweezers there we go i think i might actually split the paper there there we go So what I'm what I could do with is something really tiny and pokey, like for example, that might work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just stick that to the screwdriver. This is the smaller screwdriver I've got, and then or a cocktail stick or, or something pokey, and then I can just position that i like that idea that's really good i'm happy with that so i'm going to push that with my finger and i'm going to slip out the screwdriver that's why i've not stuck it down too hard to the screwdriver so i can slip it out are we happy with that positioning yeah that's really good so i'll try that again Or a pin. Actually, a pin would be much better. Oh, God, that's just come off first time there. So, this is the point I don't really want to drop it. So, you can see where the sticky bit is. I just want to stick just to the end, just to the very end. Um, we don't want to stick it to this. We just want enough on there to support. Okay. I mean... This is all how much tight effort you put into this is dependent on how, how well you want it to look. If you don't care, just slap it on any old how. And, and it's your model. Um, something that I say to, to people in painting a lot, people say, oh, do you like this? Do you like this? And then uh, my, my answer is usually, do you like it? And if they say, well, not really, I'm not happy. Then I'll go, well, it's not good then. If they say, yeah, it's really nice. I'm, I've put a lot of effort into that and I'm really happy with the results. Then my response will be, well, that's all that matters because this is your model. Okay. Are you happy? With, do you like this? I think that's brilliant. <laughs> so I believe that that is the part complete. This is two weeks work. This is absolutely, I'm sorry, I'm going to say it. This is absolutely amazing. I absolutely love it. How heavy um, is it now it's all together? Um, it's about as, 
Hang on, I've, I've got some spare parts. Would you say it's as heavy as the, the front <laughs> suspension? Oh, front suspension. Maybe uh, without the wheels. I would say it's about as two thirds of the weight of the front suspension. <coughs> now, I've, I've actually got the, um, the Newport issues that I've not put together yet. So there we go. <coughs> oh, excuse me, coughing. I'm so sorry. I would say it's a little bit heavier than one wheel and tire combined. Right. Okay. If I had some scales, I, I would weigh it. Um, but I would say that we have got a hell of a lot of money for those two issues we've just, we've yeah. just bought. <coughs> Excuse me one sec. Sorry. <clears throat> no, they're definitely don't lose all the detail on that. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. That is, I mean, if people absolutely insist on rating the value for the issue, then that is most definitely worth money and does anybody remember and i think it was an aa advert and this um this this boy has been spending ages fixing his car and he's done it and his mum comes out and says oh well done son look spare parts too which well, just reminded me of that because this seems to be a, a, a spare part so yeah. um um i don't know what do i do with that if anybody has See, I would say if anybody has issue 26 and that part is missing, personally, I'd be getting on to harsh yet. But if anybody wants that spare part, um, if anybody perhaps does aircraft modeling and they want maybe to do some uh, kit bashing or something, give us a shout and you can have it. Because um, that's obviously I don't need it. I can't remember where it goes now. On the there. Though, yeah. I'm really happy. Do you know what I love most about this engine? It's so basic. Everything that's on there is needed. There's none of your fancy gadgetry. Um, there's no point buying one of these computer management things because it's there's nowhere for it. There's nothing for it to computer manage. It's just every part in there is essential and it's basic and it does the job and that's all it needs to do. And I think that's what makes it beautiful. So there you go. Um, so, yeah, Adrian Langley has said that he would leave the black pipe off and do it's ready to, until it's ready to go in the vehicle. Dave Mill, I think, I don't know if Dave Mills agreed with me or agreed with Adrian, but yeah, if you haven't done issue 25 yet, do not put the pipe in. It's going to be luck. You know, I've not it and i've broken it but it is quite brittle and i wouldn't be surprised if i break that again um even though it did say in the issue um you might want to masking tape it so if you got for example a cork if you have stuck it in well if you can gently prise it out but what i did last week and i'm going to do it again is i've put that that cork on there or anything that you can get on there that works. Um, and I'm going to I'm gonna keep this cork on there for as long as I can get away with. I mean, it might be next week we have to take that cork off. But um, it's such a shame that it sat on my shelf and I've, I've stopped. Nothing's touched it. And now all of a sudden, as soon as I get it off the shelf. Uh, yeah, okay. So, um, yeah, no, I'm really happy with that. So, shall we have a look at next week's issue? Yeah, I'm already there. But it doesn't okay. give too much away, really. It doesn't give too much away. Let me um, just move these parts away from the table because I am super excited because what is the one part that I personally am looking forward to doing? I yeah, think I know. No, dude. You've totally forgotten. Is it uh, attaching the front wheels to the back? It is indeed. 
Right, I have taken a scan of this, but um, I'll try and show you the magazine. But if you want a better picture, um, and it's not much better, but that's the picture that we get. I've got it up um, here if you want me to. Um, oh, you've got it up, have you? Sure. Oh, fantastic. Horrocks to the rescue. So there we go. And the description says side beams for the A frame are supplied. So it says supplied, it doesn't say fitted. Oh, and attached to the rear subframe. The front wheels are then attached to the, sub, the front subframe. Um, so it looks like we're attaching the front wheels. And I think, was it Dave Say called that as issue 27 or 28? Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Dave. But he said, I, I know he did, did it, do a prediction for when we will attach it. And I think it was round about issue 28. Uh, I'm pretty sure he said before issue 30. So, which is a bit of a shame because I was going to design some blocks. Um, let me get my chassis down. I've mentioned this a few times. Um, because I'm not comfortable putting my bus on a table with no front wheels attached. I've actually got it in a box. Do you mind if I just show that for a moment? Yeah, um, that's it. It's hard to see because of the focus, but the back wheels, the, the, the back of the chassis is, is, is sitting on the box edge. The wheels are free in the box, and then about halfway down, so we've got the front is overhanging the box. That's because I don't want it sitting on, on the on the table. probably won't do any damage. And what I was looking at doing, obviously, I've got, well, not obviously to everyone, but I've got this 3D printer. And I was thinking about designing a couple of blocks. Is it the DeLorean? You get these blocks. Yes. Um, and you can you can bring up. And I was thinking about doing, say, maybe a block that will go across there and then the corresponding one and maybe one near the front. But if we're going to attach the front wheels within a couple of weeks... Do we really need to? Do we really need them? Mm. Or oh, the only so, other thing you may be able to use is uh, a bit off subject, but the stand you've done for your three D printer box would that work if you printed another it, one of those out to sit it on? Uh, it might be a little bit thin, but I can make them wider. Mm. Um, do you know, it's such a shame I can't get my proper camera angle. Uh, yeah, I don't know where that's disappeared to. So it's a shame you can't see my awful face today. But um, so um, let me right now that Jack stands. That's it. Now I'm going to give you all a spoiler warning um, because I have rumours, and at the same time. Uh, there's a fact. I mean, a lot of us are on this Facebook group already, so some of you may already have seen it. Um, but there was a list of uh, what we're doing when. Oh, sorry. Um, so let me just try and find it because it was a few days ago and I've lost it. But someone else did actually put in uh, a post. Here we go. I found it. Um, Someone made a post about spoilers, and I kind of half agree with them that maybe we should sort of be putting spoilers. So I'm going to give you a spoiler warning. Um, I must admit, I do like the surprise of opening the magazine. Um, but obviously, I found these rumors that I would I would like to pass on to you. So if you don't want to hear them, um, what I'll do, hit the mute, and when I go like that, it means I've, I've, I've spoken about them. Um, so the rumour is issue 26 is assembling the crankcase, which obviously it is because that's what we've just been doing this week. Next week is fitting the front subframe and the front axle. Um, issue 28 is assembling the radiator. Issue 29, finishing and fitting the engine. Um, so that sounds a good one. I like the words finishing. Mm. Um, then issue 30 is fitting the exhaust pipe. 
and then 31, something completely different. And I suspect Dave Say will look forward to this, fitting the rear wheel archers. Um, cause he, he said, did say he was a bodywork man. Um, and then we've got the next two issues is fitting the left front wheel arch and fog lamp and then fitting the front right wheel arch issue 34 fuel tank, fuel filler and safety bars. And then issue 35 is a, is an issue that I can get excited about. Um, they're both fitting the floor of the driver's cab and the handbrake. I'm not excited about the handbrake so much, but. Um, we're starting to build up that driver's cab now. So um, that's quite an exciting one. Um, do you know, Ian, it's just, just this, so I don't know if it's just a second, but he's put, looking good, I might order another engine so I can display next to my bus. Um, do you know, I don't think that's an awful idea. Um, it's a good idea, yeah. Yeah. So it'd be nice to show off that engine because it is... It is a thing of beauty, really, isn't it? And and we're learning so much about it. I mean, I now know the basic parts. Um, you know what they're called. Obviously, I I know some of the parts. <coughs> so just, that's really weird. Sorry, I just saw something move across the table. Right. Sorry. No, my apologies. So, um, anything grab your interest on that little list, then, Holick? I think. I just like, uh, yeah, as you say, like finishing the parts. And I like, instead of like at the moment, I've got like the bonnet loose and I've got the <clears throat> front end loose and I've got suspension loose. I like to get it all together so it's this one yeah. unit and then build on that. <clears throat> that's that's my yeah. favourite parts. Um, one of the things that I'm, um, I'll use the word disappointed just for, uh, in, in, in replacement of a more appropriate word. But obviously, yesterday we fit. Uh, yesterday, last week. So I was kind of hoping we might fit this this week. So this is still another spare part that's sitting there. I know it'll all get, um, it'll all get put together in the end. I expect got, that will probably go on next week. Then maybe yeah, when the front wheels go um, on. I have seen someone attach this to their engine because it's. He says it's obvious where it's going to go. Um, this I is a part that's that. not. Yeah, this is a part that hasn't been fitted yet. Um, we've got the rear stairs to go in. We've got the front radiator grill. Uh, and we've got the bonnet. Um, now, it might be like your your Back to the Future DeLorean, where you get a part in issue two or three or something, and it doesn't actually get attached um, until, like, issue 73 or something. Yeah, yeah. So... Um, and it was funny as well, wasn't it? Because me and me, you and uh, Dave were having a, lot, a bit of a laugh last week, and I, I suggested that perhaps the seats, when we get round to them, we're going to have to be sewed by hand. Yeah, and we're all going to be sitting there with our sewing kits. I tell you what, if I've got to be honest with you, if we have to hand sew them, I, I'm quitting the build. You, you <laughs> I cannot sew to save my life. <laughs> So, no, but either way, it's an ideal time to learn, though, isn't it? It's another skill. Oh, I can sew. I just don't want to. No, no, I'm sure it wouldn't be that bad. But wouldn't it? It would be funny. We'd have to start up like some sort of sewing uh, sewing group. So yeah, so we'll have Wednesday night is build a route master day. Friday night can be uh, sewing the seats night. Yeah, so with Penny. Um, right, okay, we're, we're starting to go over our time quite badly and we might end up losing Horlix as a result. But earlier on, I asked you how many parts you thought we've used. Um, yes. This issue had 55 parts supplied, and that is the most parts of any issue. It's two more than issue two. Um, but would anyone like to hazard a guess, um, not including this issue, how many parts we've had so far? Um, so if you included the screws with that? Including everything, the screwdrivers, the spare screws, everything that they supplied to us. Um, and what I'll do is I will see if I've got issue one to hand. Right, so while you're having guesses, we'll have a look at issue one. So we've got... Uh, the bonnet, the grill, the license plate, the bonnet, sorry, the grill frame, the grill, the license plate, the bonnet, the bonnet brace, the access panel, 
two hinges, two hinge seats. Um, we've got six bushes, of which one is spare. We've got 20 AM screws, of which four are spare. We've got three BM screws, and we've got a screwdriver. So I'm counting that as 40 parts just in issue one. Uh, right. So, yeah, that makes my guess look ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so let's wait for a couple of guesses and then I'll. Uh, Dave's just said if you want to sell, build a ship. That's a really good point. Um, oh, what's no, that I mean, for the sales? Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of sewing on that. So, um, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna speed up a bit because it is, it's twenty to ten. Right, we have had up to and including issue twenty five, five hundred and ninety pieces. Mm -hmm. Can you believe that? God. And what that means, that's an average of twenty four pieces per part. So that means if 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 the the average maintains at 24 pieces an issue, the, the completed model will have 3,068 pieces. Dave said 450. So even Dave was quite a few out. Um, and, and when I added, I was adding them up this afternoon, and I'm like, really? And I had to double check some of the figures because I didn't think we'd put that many parts together. Um, but yeah, if, if it continues at this average, Three thousand and sixty-eight parts. Right, so, well, Dave's a lot closer than me because I'm going to reveal my guess. When when Penny asked me earlier, I said eighty-five. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's that's just about covered. But um, then I wasn't including the screws. Right. So. Yeah, well, I mean, I've counted the screws. Uh, Dave, uh, Chris, the postage that I use, I actually don't know because I posted so many things together and i just paid one amount and it came to about uh 15 pounds but that was for for lots of different things that i did at the post office today so um i but don't don't worry about that anyway because um i've got yeah just this is actually in reference to something else that i'm doing for chris so um oh i didn't put the screwdriver head away oh that's very bad of me in fact, I didn't put anything away. Right, so guys, I'm going to uh, wrap up the show now, if that's okay with you. Um, next week, um, I think Horlix will have, in fact, I think the subscribers will get their next four issues. I'm going to call it as tomorrow. Yeah. Right. Like Ian says he's going to put something inside the engine that makes the feel makes the engine feel more realistic. Okay. I mean, you know more about the engines than us, so I'd be interested if you can feed back on that. Um, but also, what is what does an engine weigh one to one scale, and what is it? What what should it weigh one to twelve scale? So, um, uh, Dave says, "Great show again. Thank you very much." Chris Davey says fab. Um, so next week, um, I won't pressure Horlick to give us an update on his parts because it will only have been about a week since he's got them. So I'll try and get an update on my new port. Um, we may possibly have uh, another guest on the show. I'm trying to work on There's two people I'm asking. Um, one is Builder. And one I thought, this might backfire, it may not be very good, um, but I've actually got um, a lady that works at a news agent. Oh, I'm so sorry. I forgot a shout out right at the beginning of the show. Um, so big hello to Shannon, who works in the uh, news agents at Newport bus station. Thank you for being fabulous to me and everybody. She's, uh, she's just recently started there and she seems to be getting on very well. Um, but yeah, we're looking at getting, um, try and get it from a different perspective. We pick the, the issue up from the news agents and that's when we see it. Whereas the news agents, I imagine they get these issues come in 
and they might think they look fantastic or they might think they look boring but that's it that's all they see we take our issues away from from the shop and we don't we never take them back into the news agents and say thought thought you might be interested but this is what i've come up with yeah um so yeah i thought it might be interesting to talk to someone from a different perspective um adrian's reminding me not, uh, to not forget to put the screws away um which i will do that as soon as i finish the show i promise in fact i'm going to get my screw pots out now so um, and, and also in summary what do you think of the screwdriver in summary i'm going to give the screwdriver a nine out of ten losing a mark because uh 90 percent of the bits i haven't even used yet um is that fair and reasonable yeah no, that's fine so i know it's a bit early to tell but obviously yeah. the more you use it well i i gave the washing up liquid um about three weeks before i decided it was definitely brilliant um but i can feel straight away um, but the reason I didn't get, I didn't say straight away with a screw, uh, with this washing up liquid is because many of the screws did go in fine without it. Some of them did stick. Um, <laughs> Love Mini says no. I, I'm guessing Love Mini just saying no because that's not a fair rating. Um, but yeah, with um, without this, without the washing up liquid, some of the screws were difficult, but most of them were okay. Um, but with the washing up liquid, I've not had a single problem with any screws. So, um, but the screwdriver, we combined with a washing up liquid, it's like it's like I'm in dream sc screwdriver dream heaven. So um, yeah, I'm I'm. Um, was it Adrian who's ordered a set? Um, I really seriously don't think you'll regret it. And we even have two un unidentified little bits. Um, we, we haven't decided what these are yet, but this looks possibly something to do with drilling because it's got a point in the middle. I'm wondering if it's like a pilot thing. So if you're going to use like a self-tapping screw in a small project, maybe you can like pierce a hole for the screw to start off in or something. Yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, because that, that's a bit of a precision point there. So if we, we poke poke it there that's where the center of our hole is going to be and then a cup couple of screws and that should scrape away a little circle and then we can get our drill in there and drill the hole out properly obviously i'm not going to drill through that but it was just the first thing i had and this looks like it's just a, a micro tiny... yeah so would this be like um for spectacles or something yeah i suppose you could do uh... So, yeah, I don't know. So that might come useful in, in the build at some point. Yeah. Right. So, fabulous show. Fourth week running. I've said that this is looking like the best issue to date. Um, oh, Chris has got one for games console controllers. It? It's is for T8 security bit. Okay. <laughs> Did it say I'm, on the side of it? because all of those parts have got stamps on them yes it does the say something on the side um the, the one with the with the little pilot bit on it it says jm jm crv and then a little circle with a cross in it so you can't see it but uh 1.5 and the one that we think might be good for spectacles says jm crv y 0 0.8 eight, yeah so uh, it doesn't really say um, that. i've got to be honest with you chris i have no idea what a t8 security bit is um but i'm pretty sure one day if i need it it'll the, the manual will say get a j t t8 security bit and then i'll go oh i know what they're on about because chris told me in the stream um right guys so i'm gonna close the show um, thank you so much for watching. We've got 21 people watching the show. That might be a record. I've yeah. not been keeping a, uh, keeping track of how many people have been watching. Um, but that suggests that between us, between all of about 20 of us, we're doing something right. So I hope that yeah. means you've all had fun.
Um, and so please, also, please do us a favour if you, if you are watching. There's obviously 21 people, and you like the show. Please give us a thumbs up. Yeah, we've we've got a good eight thumbs up. So, um, um, yeah, that says to me that we're re we're yeah. not only reaching out, but we're we're people are happy with us reaching out. So, um, oh, 22 we're watching. So someone's someone's logged in. That might be Dave Say, actually, because Dave Say sent me a message to say his internet is playing up. Um, so it's a little bit unfortunate. Um, but worst case scenario, um, I do leave these broadcasts on my channel, so you can always come back and watch them at any time. Um, so, yeah, so I'm going to log off now. Um, thank you very much for watching. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah. See you later, everyone. See you next week. All right. Take care then. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.